I remember when I first got on the police department, you know, they would say, okay, what we're going to teach you is bare minimum. You're not going to learn how to defend yourself. You're not going to learn how to do much. We recommend you go after you become a cop and take outside training on your own. Hi, my name is Bill, Bill Kinkel, William Kinkel. I'm a retired New York City police officer. I also practice martial arts, uh, traditional Japanese and Okinawan martial arts uh, for almost 40 years. I'm retired uh, from uh, the police department since 2007. What draws you particularly to the martial arts? What drew it to me when I was a teenager was um, I was I was beat up as a kid and I wanted to do it and I, I started on my own. It's not something that my parents said we think you should do. I, I wanted to do it to learn how to defend myself. I just loved it. I, I don't know what I loved about it. I mean, it's hard work, uh, but it also gets you in a routine. It's very regimented in a lot of ways, so it just fits into me. Mm. It's physical exercise. It's, it's interesting. It involves uh, Japanese culture, which to me is fascinating. Uh, there's a lot of things in my life that I take from Japanese culture and apply it to things that I do. I don't know why I love it, but I do. Mm. Can you give a few examples of um, specific parts about Japanese culture or even the martial arts that you put into your regular day-to-day -day life? I also have to change my oh, There we go, yeah. <laughs> my feet are coming up, yeah. <laughs> There's really a lot, and I tell students all the time when I teach, uh, the person I am today was molded from my martial arts. The things you learn, the principles you learn in martial arts, Regimen is good, in my opinion. For me, if, if I'm not early, I'm late. Mm. Um, I think the Japanese culture uh, mimics that. There's a lot of order in Japan. I've been to Japan five times. Cleanliness, my understanding, they tend to make ceremonies or just create traditions out of just about anything. Even something as simple for an American to you know set up flowers. Mm. There's flower arranging. Uh, to have tea becomes a tea ceremony. So, I mean, not that I do all of that stuff, but it fascinates me how that culture can put something very simple and make something that makes you focus on the details of it. Whereas things in the United States seem to be you just do it to do it or you do it because you have to and it has less meaning. Even in the details, it gives you a new sense of drive almost. Sure, yeah, definitely a new sense of drive. Yeah, I mean, I, I really can't lock in what makes me love it. I don't, I don't even try to explain it, I just enjoy it. Has your training in martial arts translated into your career as a police officer? Yeah, without a doubt. Um, so again, starting in martial arts at 14, I didn't become a police officer until I was about 23 years old. So I had quite a few years of training. Traditional martial arts teaches you how to be courteous to people and not be a bully. Even if you're in charge in a teaching position, you teach the way you want to be taught. I always carried that over to, a, to my police officer's job as I didn't look at myself as a position of power or, you know, you have to do what I say because I'm the police officer, but rather maybe keeping the peace and being professional and have people look at me and say, I'm going to do what this officer asked me to do, not because I'm afraid of him or, or you know, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to get arrested or something to that effect, but rather I respect how he presents himself, he's polite to me, and I'm going to do it because I respect him. Um, obviously, uh, skills in, um, in martial arts, in situations where maybe a, a criminal would resist, um, you know, I would have to use some of my skills to, to um, apprehend him. Mm -hmm. Doesn't necessarily mean I have to beat him down until he's unconscious, it just means I need to take care of him, take him into custody. I got that from the martial arts. I see in police work today that a lot of people don't have that and it's not taught in the police departments, but I was um, lucky enough to bring that into the police department to help me get through it. Why do you think it's not in police departments today? It seems like when they talk about um, making change to police, uh, police work, that's probably what they need to do. Uh, unfortunately, training costs lots of money. In order to train the police officer, they either have to be off duty or on duty and not out on patrol. They have less resources, so either they pay the money for overtime when they're not supposed to work, or they take them off their job to train them. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of it comes down to money. I think police departments throughout the country kind of balance between what they need their police officers to have as opposed to what they would like them to have. 
based on money and it always comes down to bare minimum in training get them out on the street it seems to bite them in the butt a lot of times because training always seems to be uh, what's lacking in a lot of these situations that become controversial today when you're training them with a bare minimum what do you think becomes a result of that police officers have to constantly make uh, decisions split second if you train regularly the split second decision you make will be more what you have been trained to do. Mm. So if you don't have the training, you're going to do what comes natural, which could very easily be a mistake. Mm. Does it guarantee it? More training increases the odds of not making mistakes. And you know, lawyers and, and media uh, can very easily twist stories to make it seem like it was your intent. I remember when I first got on the police department, you know, they would say, okay, what we're going to teach you is bare minimum. You're not going to learn how to defend yourself. You're not going to learn how to do much. We recommend you go after you become a cop and take outside training on your own, including firearms training. We do bare minimum. So we, we recommend on your own, you pay for your own bullets and you go to a range and you practice for yourself. And I found that most police officers didn't do that on their own. So being a cop, there's definitely a lot of fear associated with the job. Did the fear factor, was that reduced in any way by practicing your martial arts? Some ways yes, some ways no. I think my martial arts training gave me more confidence. I don't mean just a physical ability to defend myself. I mean teaching helped me learn how to communicate with people. So police work involves communicating. If I'm teaching a student in the martial arts and they don't understand what I'm teaching, I have to find ways of getting my point across to them. That carries over into police work. If I need a person to do something and they disagree, I have to kind of make them understand why I need them to do it. I can easily beat them and make them do it, but that's really not going to get me very far in this world. As far as fear, and I see this and speaking to people in the military, more in the police department, but if you're doing patrol, which is what I did for my whole career, you're driving around reports, car accidents, um, reports for stolen property, paperwork. And then in a moment's notice, less than a moment, it's a life or death situation. In my experience, when that happens, you don't get scared. Your body just takes over and you have to do because it's like that fight or flight thing. You don't think, you just do. Later on, when everything's over, and you, you go back and you think and you say, wow, I mean, I could have died right there. Or that was really... I'm, like, I'm scared now for what happened, but I wasn't then. For a police officer to say, well, if, if I was involved in a shooting, I would do this, 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 and this. And unless you're involved in it, you don't know what you're going to do. Because I've seen police officers freeze and not do anything in a situation. You don't know until it happens. And it doesn't make them a coward. You really can't predict something like that until you're in it. I think having more training, and I've seen military um, personnel that are police officers that they get trained a lot better and they handle stress in situations like that better because the training is more. Mm -hmm. So I think back to training right. will help them. Yeah. Education and training, yes. There were a couple of situations where I remember in the moment saying, what am I doing here? And feeling scared. We call them jobs. Any job you go to could turn into that at any moment. You go to something that you thought was a car accident, all of a sudden there's something involving a life or death situation where somebody's angry and pulls out a weapon. You try to keep your guard up for everything, and again, I, most stuff falls back on training. How would you define the concept of self-care or self-love? To me, I probably would never use the term self-love, but self-care, mm -hmm. in, in my mind, uh, means a lot more. How I take care of myself, that's, that's how I would look at it. So to me, there's no love in there, it's just things I need to do, things I need, I'm, I'm responsible for, and things that uh, I can kind of hold off my responsibility and put myself first. Mm. Why would you not choose to use the word self-love? I hate to say I don't love myself, but to me it's like, I don't, I don't love myself. <laughs> I mean, care is more taking care of things. So I, I just don't look at myself as I need to love myself, or maybe newer generations would think differently. But uh, take care of myself kind of makes more sense to me. Mm -hmm. I'm a person in you know, my 50s, so maybe I think differently than this generation. Yeah. Do you think one of the ways you maybe perhaps practice um, self-care when you can and when you, when you choose to do 
um, through your martial arts? I know you've been practicing for nearly 40 years. Without a doubt, and I've thought about this a lot. Growing up, I mean, I started martial arts, I was a, a teenager, 14 years old. Back then, I was only training uh, two times a week, and any girlfriend I had was, they knew, okay, those two days a week, we don't see each other, it's, those are my days. Martial arts days. Martial arts days. I'm doing the martial arts longer than I'm married, and my wife came into the fact that the days I practice are my days, and even anniversaries we don't celebrate on the day I teach or practice. You know, we save it for the weekend or a time when we're available. I kind of worked my jobs out and my schedules are out, out around my martial arts schedule because to me, I needed that in my life. So it's a big part of a uh, stress reliever as well as something I really enjoy, so. How would you so physically practice the self-care concept? I mean, I, I try to look at if, if I can't function and I do have responsibilities being a father and a husband and a business owner running a martial arts school, those responsibilities can't get taken care of. And sometimes it, it gets a little bit uh, um, overwhelming and I have to ease back or have people tell me ease back because you're burning yourself out. Right. So, when do you kind of realize you need to take a, a step back and a pause? See, that's my problem, I know. Okay. <laughs> Usually it's other people telling me you're going to burn yourself out. And I just squeeze more and more into my schedule. I like helping people and I like uh, kind of a uh, control type. Uh, not, not in a bad way, I don't think, but I like to do things and run things myself. I like things a certain way. To me, I'd just rather do it myself and take on more than I can handle and I do it all the time. So on the self-care side, I always put myself on the back burner and, and try to do other things and burn myself out. It's interesting that you said you kind of like having control over certain situations, um, but your job as a police officer was very much kind of on the fly, thinking on your feet and not being able to predict what's going to happen, but being confident enough in your skills and your ability to do what's right and do what the law requires you to do. I agree. I think also another maybe another way of looking at that, going into a situation where you don't have control and gaining control, I'm always up for challenges. So to me, when I can go into a situation that's out of control and get control is rewarding. So maybe that was something that I got out of the police department. I had mentioned to you uh, off camera that I've done some dog training and it's very similar. Uh, you have a dog that doesn't know anything, doesn't communicate. And to me, it's very challenging to get this animal to do what you want. You know, I would do it for free. When I get these results, I feel rewarded. I don't need money to do it, I like it. Are there any similarities in your practice of the martial arts and your career as a police officer in the sense of self-care and self-love? Philosophy in, in traditional martial arts is you never stop learning until you die. I'm only an instructor to a student because I've experienced it before them. Uh, what I do is I give what I've learned to them. So, but I still learn. I learn from them as well as my seniors. I think there's a lot that carries over from martial arts that really helped me with police work. You have to take care of yourself because life is short and um, if you don't take care of yourself, it's going to be shorter. Sure. And those responsibilities won't be able to get done by you anyway. Yeah, that's, that's also true. Yeah. Minasan, kyo mo, eh, doga wo I practice uh, Okinawa Nishino Karate Do. Um, I have a rank of Shichi Dan and a teaching title of Kyoshi. And I also have rank uh, in Sosu Shiro Jiu Jitsu, uh, Go Mokoroku, and uh, teaching title of Shiha. This will be a kata from Ishinoru Karate Do, Okinawa Ishinoru. It's called Kusanku. <laughs>